I'm doing a follow-up to the rather surprising news from a couple of days ago in which Mark Shuttleworth announced the end of the Unity desktop in Ubuntu. He stated that the mobile convergence had not happened at the rate he expected, and now further news reveals that Canonical had lost quite a lot of money, it's expected to be about 300 million, according to records submitted to the Inland Revenue, the tax services in the United Kingdom. So from a business standpoint, it makes sense to cut projects which are losing money and taking considerable amount of effort. So yes, in this case, it is the Unity desktop. And there is further bad news for the workforce in Canonical in that there's been quite significant job reductions. In the best case scenario, the register understands that departments would suffer a 30% headcount reduction, but at worst case, it could be 60%. It is not clear how many staff have gone, but Canonical is believed to have a workforce of 700. In terms of profitability, you have the server side, and the Internet of Things side, so those environments don't really have a desktop. So to expend the effort of developing Unity for an environment which is not required doesn't make sense. Yes, it's required on the desktop side, but how much revenue are Canonical receiving? I don't know, I don't have a figure, but I would imagine it is significantly lower and therefore unprofitable, particularly as Canonical are developing the desktop in-house. So moving to the GNOME desktop essentially removes that cost element. It will be a significantly lower cost to get the GNOME desktop working in Ubuntu, particularly as we can see it's already done with the Ubuntu GNOME distro. So going through some of the points, is this an April Fool's joke? So no, as I mentioned, it is on the Ubuntu Insights blog, and it was released a few days after April the 1st. Coincidentally, that was about a few hours before the tax year ended for the UK. Is it the end of Ubuntu? No. Ubuntu Server and Snappy Core are doing very well, and those represent the main business interests for Ubuntu. It is just a change of direction for the desktop release of Ubuntu. So what are some of the things we will lose with Unity? The heads-up display. Although there is a GNOME version available, looking at the page in GitHub, it does mention a searchable command palette in every modern GTK Plus application. No mention of cute applications running in GNOME. So I don't know on that. And there is a KDE version rumoured, but I don't know when that will happen. Unity did manage a decent implementation of the global local menus. The global menu has just returned to the Plasma 5 desktop. And we will lose out on a fancy looking task switcher. Those are just some of my opinion of the decent features of the Unity desktop. The future of Ubuntu GNOME. A little bit early to tell at the moment, there is an ongoing discussion in the Ubuntu GNOME mailing threads here. Ubuntu GNOME provide a stock desktop, so maybe they will live on with that offering, whereas the Ubuntu release may have GNOME with a few extras added. What has become of Unity? Well, Unity 8 has already been forked. So there's a couple of posts about it, so I'm not sure if these are the same. I have a feeling they're actually two different releases, so there are perhaps two different forks at the moment. Let's see what happens as time goes on. Perhaps there will only be one fork remaining. Unity 8 is dependent on the Mir Display Manager, and it is unlikely the community will be able to maintain that. Certainly there was no input from the major graphics card suppliers of AMD or Nvidia, so it had to be maintained by Canonical. I imagine that was no small undertaking. It was all a bit strange that, really. I never understood why they didn't go to Wayland. So perhaps the community will have a chance to move to Wayland or X11. What of Unity 7? Well, it's unused in any other distribution. I did mention about Arch, but I think further inputs have suggest that there are packaging issues, so whether it is actually usable in Arch, I don't know. I don't believe so. But there is going to be a challenge continuing the development of it, particularly because the GNOME changes each release require themes to be constantly updated. Canonical reinstated removed features, for example the Nautilus type head search, so whether those features will be kept like that, or whether the community would just fall back to using the GNOME applications as they are. But probably the worst impact is with Compiz, because it is unlikely to be ported to Wayland. Although this news dates back a little while, so that's uh, 2014 and 2013, so yeah, not exactly up to date, but um, bearing in mind we haven't seen any development to Unity 7, well, pretty much since then. Well, no major changes to it. 
so why not KDE? It's interesting that Canonical didn't go down this route, but I believe there are a couple of issues. There is the technical issues and political issues. The technical ones first being the apps package manager. When you come to upgrade Ubuntu, you have a long list of packages installed on your system, and the system upgrade will make every effort to maintain those applications you have on there. But if you're trying to move to the KDE desktop and you have, say, Nautilus installed on your system, well, you wouldn't really want that anymore. You would like the KDE file manager, Dolphin. So if you end up with Nautilus and Dolphin on there, you have two file managers. But it's not just one application, it's like every application you have pre-installed in your system will end up duplicated. Well, I suppose you could change the Nautilus package to a transition package, so it would get installed, but no actual application would be installed. But that might cause more problems than it solves. I don't think it was ever an impossibility, but perhaps the political issue was more strong here. In 2015, Mark Shuttleworth forced Jonathan Riddell, who was the Kubuntu Community Council leader, to step down. There is a long list of exchange here on emails, and you can go through them. I'll leave a link in the description, but just consider there was this politics that went on in the past, so perhaps Mark Shuttleworth is saving face and not going anywhere near KDE. And Kubuntu doesn't receive any financial support from Canonical, and the same question for Ubuntu Mate, because it would certainly put Ubuntu back to its roots of 2010, pre the GNOME 3 and Unity days. Well, there's still the issue with apps, although perhaps the Mate desktop is a bit too old-fashioned for what is one of the most popular Linux distributions. So what about the future of convergence in Linux? Well, there is a Linux distribution here called Maru OS. This was a lot of what Unity managed which is essentially the ability to plug your phone into your computer. Perhaps it doesn't have the reach on the number of phones that Ubuntu had, but it could be an option. And the other possibility lies with the KDE Plasma desktop, so who knows? Certainly the Plasma desktop is the most aggressively developed desktop in Linux at the moment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.